What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is the 2001 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Huge thanks to Mike for providing me here with his pristine NB2 Miata to review for you guys today. So about the 2001 Miata, well, this was the first year of the NB2 evolution of the second generation NB Miatas, which came out in 1999. And so for 2001 here, it got some really nice improvements, both mechanically, which I'll get into more in a second because it was very controversial at the time, uh, but also uh, as far as the exterior here, obviously the NBs were a little curvier than the originals, uh, but you know, still look really good just you know without the uh, flip up headlights and stuff. But for the NB2 here, you'll see there's some new headlights. They're a bit larger here and they have projectors in them and the front bumper is new it's a little bit more aggressive here on these versus the original NBs and uh, I also like how you have like a little bit of a bump here in the middle of the hood and just the curves of the front end here it, you know it looks friendly and slightly aggressive at the same time uh, especially back then you know it had a lot more of a muscular look than the original NBs and I think it looks really nice this one also has this arrow kit here so you can see on the size of the side skirts how they kind of come out and it's a little more aggressive you also see here on the sides you have these 16 inch wheels which were part of an optional suspension package upgrade um, which is about a thousand dollars extra gave you those wheels and tires as well as a straw tower bar bilstein dampers uh, stiffer springs a limited slip diff so you know really nice package and so this one does have that package so we'll be able to test that out here on a back road but other things though coming out to the back here you can see there's a little bit of a curvature a little bit of a spoiler built into the trunk lid there there's also some larger tail lamps there in the back here for the nb2s and uh, you know they redesigned the bumper back there as well this one also does have a cobalt muffler as well so uh, that has the uh, larger exhaust tip which I think really fits in nicely especially the chrome polished tip with these chrome wheels and everything it really rounds out the look and this is also a special edition Miata here for 2001 so that gave you a few of the extra little touches uh, that set this apart from a regular Miata like you'll see the wood grain nardi steering wheel on the inside there and all that but let's hop inside and uh, we'll talk more about that interior so yes the interior of the 2001 Miata here well there's obviously not a lot to talk about here it's a very small little vehicle and one that's you know 21 years old at this point so nice and simple as far as the interior goes so uh, you know you'll really see this standout things with this one being the special edition having the wood grain um, which doesn't quite match you have it matches for the e-brake and the steering wheel here and kind of the shifter but then the other trim here uh, around the uh, center dashboard area isn't quite a perfect match but very cool to have the wood thing here kind of gives it a very classic feel uh, but anyway sitting down in these seats I'm really impressed by just how soft and comfortable these seats are um, not a ton of bolstering I mean they do have large looking bolsters but they're very gradually sloped so they don't really hug you in super well at least someone who's on the smaller side like myself but still very comfortable seats and I really like them nonetheless and these seats are also a new design for 2001 um, so they did revise them a little bit to you know make them better and uh, so it is one unique thing here of the NB2. The steering was also really great wonderfully simple uh, it's a Nardi Torino wheel which is very cool has little notches on the back of it to help you hang on a little bit better because since it's you know just this glossy wood it uh, doesn't have the greatest amount of grip, you know, like a leather steering wheel would, but still nice to have nonetheless and just a, a very cool look and still works great, of course. The gauges also are really nice. So for 2001, one of the new things here was the white faces and uh, really jazzes them up, I think, a little bit. And uh, just a few, you know, simple basic dials here, but it is nice that you have an oil uh, temperature gauge. So great to have that. Pretty easy to read, and although some people didn't like the fact that at night they're backlit red. Uh, that was a complaint back then, but... Uh, you know, I still think they work great. Coming over to the center here, you actually have Bose stereo even way back in 2001 here in these. It's a CD player as well as having AM, FM, and, uh, you know, for the time, really great. And it's also a doubled in unit. So if you did want to modernize this, you could pull that out and this little spot underneath it and then actually put in, you know, modern, you know, like six or seven inch touchscreen or something in there if you really wanted to. Uh, and then just your basic climate controls, of course. And uh, then another new thing here for 2001 was that they moved the power window switches to the middle here. They also so uh, made a power door lock standard, which other owners back then actually complained about as well, because you know, in a car this small, you can actually reach over and unlock that passenger door without even barely even having to lean over. So having power locks, especially in a vehicle like this, was kind of silly to a lot of people. But um, it did have that, you know, as one other way to kind of try and make us a little more luxurious here as the years went on in the Miata. 
Another new little change here for 2001 with these was that you had a covered cup holder now. I guess previously it was uncovered, so you had a little covered cup holder. Just one, but still nice to have at least one cup holder here. In front of it, you will see the all-important ashtray, which uh, was still a thing, you know, 21 years ago to have. And uh, so, yeah, interesting that you have that there and also has a cover on it. Otherwise, the storage space here in the Miata is obviously it's not much. You have a tiny little uh, pocket here in the door for an actual map back when people actually still used those. Uh, and then you also do have the center armrest which um, is hard plastic, not great for resting your arm on, but, you know, nice to have some support, I guess, nonetheless. And you open that up, and you'll see enough space, perfectly sized for several CDs, as you'll see here, which would have been, you know, spot on with what you wanted back in 2001. And just also your controls there for the trunk and the fuel door. Uh, but, you know, a nice little extra spot there. And you do also still have a glove box, which is something, you know, that uh, even some modern cars uh, don't have these days. So nice you have a glove box. And you also do have this other little net here behind the uh, seats. And, uh, you know, you could maybe stuff something in between the seats there if you're not super tall as well uh, but that's about it as far as that storage space the trunk space though is pretty respectable here on the Miata as well it's not quite as deep as a brand new Miata for example but you know about the same kind of width there and uh, you know length to it and you know should be fine for a few bags of groceries and all that but uh, obviously you know you can fit a weekend bag in there but this isn't gonna be a vehicle you can fit a ton of stuff in of course but given the space constraints they did a pretty good job of the storage and the one last little thing I do want to mention about this interior here for the NB2s in 2001 is that they got a glass rear window with a defroster in it which is a nice improvement because previously you just had the plasticky windows didn't have the defroster um, so that was a really nice improvement here in 2001 to have that and so one other important thing I wanted to point out all right, so let's start up and go for a drive. The 2001 Miata still had, uh, you know, a normal key here to it, but did have the keyless access. You had, uh, you know, so you could actually, you know, do the power unlock thanks to the power door locks now. Um, so that was one nice thing to have the power locks. Uh, but anyway, of course, you just uh, slip the key into the slot here, and it starts right up. All right, so setting off here in the 2001 Mazda MX-5 Miata. So the first thing that I think I notice about it, you have you know, wonderfully sharp throttle response here since it's actually you know attached to a cable and it's very old school with its feel, of course. And uh, that combined with a clutch that's very natural, has a good weight to it, uh, and then this shifter, which is really wonderful. It's nice and light, actually, and all the gears are very well-defined, but it doesn't take a lot of muscle to go into them. It's a really nice-feeling gearbox, actually. You also have a nice little burble out of that uh, cobalt exhaust in the back. It really gives us the right sound that you want out of a little Miata like this. And uh, also because of these seats, I feel like I'm actually sitting up fairly high for how small this vehicle is. And so I have a great view for it, of course, but even like I'm only five foot nine and I feel like my head is almost poking over the windshield here with uh, just the way this is set up. It's kind of kind of interesting, but yes, you know, very comfortable seat still. It's really great to cruise. And even, you know, this one having the stiffer springs and the Bilstein dampers here of this uh, suspension package. Um, you know, I mean, this road is pretty well maintained here currently, but uh, it's a really smooth ride. Just feels really nice and comfortable even whenever you're just cruising at a relaxed pace like this. But it feels really good. It does feel pretty eager. Now this one does have the six speed manual transmission as well, um, which was an upgrade. You actually uh, could get a five speed here in these still. And so with the six speed here, you know, you have the gears a little bit closer with their spacing. Um, so, you know, should help with performance a little bit over the five speed as well. But even with, you know, the six gears, you know, obviously this car doesn't have a lot of power. So you still have to, you know, make sure that you're towards the upper end of the power band because it makes its peak torque at 5,000 RPM still so uh, you know you really still do need to ring this thing out and make sure you have it in higher RPMs if you're wanting any kind of agility out of it. Very easy to rev match your downshifts as well here thanks to everything being so precise and that was a really tight little corner and it was really fun the way that it just took it you know you definitely have a little bit of a lean to it here but uh, not too bad at all and we've got a little bit of an uphill grade here but let's do an acceleration and see how it does. out there a little bit as I was accelerating around a corner. Wow, this thing feels great though. It's like a little go-kart. I will say that the steering um, could be a little quicker. It's a little bit slow, so I'm doing a lot of steering to, you know, get it to do what I want it to do. But anyway, as far as the power goes, 
it really felt nice and punchy. So we're dealing with a 1.8 liter uh, nationally aspirated four cylinder engine. And Ford 2001 here for the MB2s, um, they actually were claiming originally 155 horsepower. And then um, they actually were able to do some dyno testing and realized it was actually only 142 horsepower. A huge change for a vehicle that's you know only dealing with this much power. And they actually, uh, back whenever people bought these in 2001 and bought them you know, with the assumption it had the 155 horsepower, they actually gave people the option to return the car or get a $500 rebate. No one returned the car, supposedly. Everyone just took the rebate because they still loved it even with the fact that it didn't have you know, as much power as they were claiming it would. But 142 horsepower is what you ended up with. And uh, that was thanks to uh, the variable valve timing, which was added here. And they also bumped the compression ratio. And so those things you know, combined to give you a little more power, but you already had like 140 with the NB1s. And so, you know, on paper, it didn't look like much at 125 pound feet of torque. And the zero to 60 time was about 7.9 seconds. And so, you know, obviously people were hoping for that 155, that didn't happen. But, you know, I think most owners realize that you did in real world driving have a punchier feel than the NB1. And so everyone was still, you know, happy, even though the numbers weren't what they uh, were originally claimed to be. And so very interesting little uh, fact of history I found out about this car. But I mean, you know, it's enough power. Obviously an eight seconds zero to 60 in 2022 isn't anything to get excited about. It's actually pretty underwhelming considering most families sedans and even minivans will smoke it but you know the Miatas have never been about outright speed they're about carrying speed through a corner and being able to really go fast through those corners and it's all about that fun and I mean even you know I'm not even paying attention I was trying to go fast in this car but it is so easy to carry speed through those corners and I find myself going quicker than I'm expecting to because it's just effortlessly you know going through these corners and so this one also speaking of the corners has the suspension package which gave you like I said stiffer springs Bilstein dampers also tours and limited slip diff the 16 inch wheels um, with uh, some you know sportier tires on them this one's now running Firestone uh, Indy 500 tires um, you know to give you a little bit better grip as well uh, but they're still very skinny tires so you know not like you're having any kind of crazy grip or anything you can obviously upgrade that very easily in the aftermarket if you want but um, yeah, I mean, it really is great. Also, they gave you some structural reinforcements as well with that suspension package. And so because of that, though, it actually bumped the curb weight up by a good bit because a base Miata would be uh, under 3,400 pounds. And so now with all the packages this one has, also this has ABS, which was a $550 option, by the way, back then. Um, but with the ABS as well, you know, a couple other things that make it a little bit heavier. <laughs> I like how it chirps the tires, though, still. Oh, this thing is a real fun little car to drive. Anyway, you know, so this one, the curb weight is, I think, about uh, 2437, which is remarkably only a couple dozen pounds away from a current NB2 Miata. Uh, so it's really impressive with the new one that they actually were able to keep it, you know, so light. And I'll talk more about that in my NB2 review. But, um, you know, I mean, it's just such a light little car, though, that it just still is just so easy to toss around in corners. Um, but with the suspension packs, I think it really did help to button things down because um, it's been a long time since I reviewed some of the older Miatas, but um, this definitely seems to have a little bit more poise than those earlier ones did. And this engine, having the variable valve timing in it means that, you know, it's obviously not quite as intense as VTEC or something, but it did give you a little bit more rip in those upper RPMs and feels really nice to rev out this engine. I think it has a little more character than the NC engine had, and I think it has a little more character than even uh, the ND1 uh, Miata, which is a little flat with this power. ND2 has fixed that, and now it's you know a fantastically fun motor with way more power. But you know, back then I just really think this is kind of a sweet spot in current you know Miata generations with you know having the smaller dimensions, the simpler uh, design here before the NCs came in, but still having you know the great great little motor here in this car, you know, nicely modernized it a little bit give you a little bit more power. The one other little handling thing I do want to mention though, getting back to the brakes, in addition to the ABS being an option, um, they also did improve the actual brake size here for 2001 to cope with the extra power they were anticipating here uh, from this engine. And so uh, the brakes in the front are about 0.6 inches uh, larger for the rotors than what they were before. And in the back, they're a full inch larger for the rotors. Uh, and so it means that you have a 
nice little improvement as far as your braking capabilities in addition to having the ABS you know if you do have that option uh, and they also did I think they improved the uh, brake master cylinder and a few other little things they tweaked the brake pads uh, to make them better as well so there is definitely a nice braking improvement here in the MV2s versus the MV1s as well I think part of the reason the suspension has so much poise as well is because you have a double wishbone suspension front and rear so I mean a really nice and advanced suspension setup to give this you know just great handling and uh, so it means that you know you don't even have to try hard in this car to carve up corners it just does it so effortlessly and with so much poise it's just a really nice thing to cruise and even whenever you're sitting behind traffic here you know you just take in the convertible experience and just cruise and listen to that nice exhaust which by the way I wish me all just these days actually sounded as good as they you know do with this exhaust because this is like the classic Miata sound I think you really want. And I just love that buzzy sound you get with it. It just sounds like a classic race car or something. Of course, another one of the perks of the Miata is, you know, their nice small dimensions means that it's very small feeling in your lane. It's very easy to maneuver, easy to park. All those nice perks of the Miatas, you know, that we've known about for many decades now. But it just is so fun. It just gives you a relaxing and just enjoyable experience here. And, uh, you know, that combined with the convertible, you know, taking in the sounds of nature as you're humming along. It just all feels really great to just cruise around, even whenever you're not trying to go fast. I think, you know, most of the time when people talk about Miatas, they talk about the razor sharp handling that's like a go-kart. And they talk about, you know, the fact it doesn't have a ton of power, but it's the whole driving a slow car fast thing and that whole fun mentality. But it's also just, I just think it's a great relaxing drive. You know, it's involving and engaging without you having to do 100 miles an hour. It's, it's engaging while still being driven slowly, which is really rare these days. And these things, I mean, you know, you can't be in a hurry, that's for sure. That was a second gear pull and it still was leisurely, you know, but I mean, it revs to 7,000 RPMs, which you can't say about a lot of other cars these days. <laughs> and then it just feels glued to the road too whenever you toss it into a corner. And just, ah, so relaxing, especially out here on these country roads. I mean, this thing just, this is what this car was made to do, and it's just a very zen and just blissful experience. One other thing about the Miatas that is so impressive is just how popular they've been over the years. I mean, whenever this car came out in 2001, they were actually celebrating the sale of over 500,000 of these things, which was crazy. They did the first 250,000 in the first three years of selling the Miatas with the NAs. But by the end of year, 2001, only, you know, a little over 10 years into the production run of the Miatas, they already were over a half a million of these things sold. Talk about a different time when half a million people over 10 years would have bought a Miata or any kind of small little sporty car. You know, there were so many more to pick from back then and Miatas thankfully are one of the last ones standing these days. But you know, this was one of several cars back then you could get like this. Um, they're just so impressive just how right they got the Miata with. You know, obviously great fuel economy, great reliability, which you didn't get with all the, you know, British stuff of, you know, the couple of decades before that. And, you know, even the stuff in its current uh, time period of 2001, a lot of the other stuff wasn't as reliable, wasn't as enjoyable. There were a couple, you know, other standouts, like you had the Toyota MR2 Spider, which I've reviewed many years ago. Also a very fun little car. But I think this actually feels a little more fun to me with the engine and, Obviously that car is really cool being a mid-engine setup, but uh, just something about the Miata just makes them so likable and so friendly and just so enjoyable. Um, and it's also impressive, you know, that they sold a half a million of these things by 2001, considering the pricing. So this is, this is really eye-opening for me, and especially for anyone who complains about new car prices these days, because in 2001, uh, these started at just over $21,500. And then this one, as tested the way this has all the options it has on it, this one would have been just under $24,000. And you might think, wow, 21 and a half and 24. Wish we had those prices these days. But when you account for inflation, a base Miata, 
at that $21,500 price point would be equate about $35,000 for a base Miata today. And this one, again, adjusted for inflation, would be about $39,000 to $40,000, um, which I mean, like the ND2 Miata that I have, um, which has a bunch of options on it and stuff, that one is about $37,000. But Miatas start, you know, uh, like $27,000, so way cheaper than that $35,000 you know, price point that you'd be expecting. that tight corner again. Yeah, this thing does such a good job. Really put the power down well, but also sliding around on you a little bit if you provoke it. But the limit slip diff, I think, really helps here with the suspension package. But anyway, so I just thought that was really, you know, enlightening that, you know, the new Miata is so impressive that it keeps the same weight roughly and it keeps a lower price tag than even 20 years ago even despite the fact that new car has way more features way more tech way more safety equipment uh way more power way more torque everything it's almost mind-blowing i don't know how moss is pulling it off these days but you know it just goes to show you know these things were really good sellers even whenever they're almost forty thousand dollars and they were considered a great bargain at 35 grand starting back then, and no one complained about it. And these days, everyone complains about everything being too expensive. Um, you know, we have it really good these days, uh, even with the current inflation, at least as far as sports cars go. The fact you can get so many impressive cars for under $30,000 still is really quite impressive. <laughs> But yeah, such an enjoyable car to drive. I just really like this one. I really like the way that Michael has set it up where it's mostly stock and you have the exhaust, you have the slightly better tires um, and those things really help to enhance it just a little bit but gives you that very true NB2 uh, vibe here and just, you know, pertains all the great driving characteristics of uh, these earlier Miatas and they're just so much fun to drive even whenever they're basically stock. Uh, but anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the MB2 Miata. Be sure to watch my NA Miata review as well as the NC, the ND, ND2. I've done them all and I'm really happy that I now have checked the box of the final generation Miata that I haven't uh, driven until now. And so now I've driven the MB and uh, it's definitely one of my favorites of the bunch, I think. I still love the ND2s, the brand new ones I think are fantastic. But if you want to go for an older one, I mean, these you know should be a really good value these days, even with the crazy used car prices of 2022 here. You know, should be able to you know get one of these for a nice low price, have a ton of fun still for very little money. And it's a really solid enthusiast value, I think, still. But anyway, that's all of my thoughts. Huge thanks to Michael once again for providing me here with his Miata to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.